Merry Christmas. And welcome to Christmas Eve worship here at Meadowbrook Congregational Church, where we believe that no matter who you are or where you are in your life's journey, you are welcome here in God's house. I'm Pastor Joel Boyd, and I'm blessed to serve this congregation and all its members and friends. I'd like to extend a special welcome to any visitors joining us today, either in person or our friends joining us online. We're glad to have you all with us. And uh, just to let everybody know, as has been our practice uh, all throughout the pandemic, our worship service is being live streamed on Facebook and maybe viewed or shared later. Well, in the coming months, I just want to give you uh, some notice on different things we're doing at our church, if you'd like to join us. Uh, this coming January, we'll be having a sermon series on racial reconciliation, which will culminate to a visit to the Underground Railroad Museum at the First Congregational Church of Detroit. We'll also have a Bible study coming up soon on the Gospel of Luke. That'll be in person and online. If you'd like to uh, learn more about that, you could ask me or reach out to our office. Well, friends, at this time, let us prepare our hearts and our minds for the worship of our Lord. Please rise in body or spirit and join in the call to worship. This comes to us from the Gospel of John, right at the beginning, John 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Now please join in singing our opening carol, Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
Friends, please join me in the invocation followed by the Lord's Prayer. Be near me, Lord Jesus. I ask you to stay as by me forever and love me, I pray, just as you entered the world on that first Christmas. Enter our hearts this day and bless us to love as you are us to the glory of God. And now I am the Lord's. We join now in saying Tonight is Christmas Eve, and we light the Christ candle. The four Advent candles and the wreath remind us of all of our preparations for this night. We have waited in hope. We have sought truth, true peace in God. We have found joy in God's presence, and we have been reminded of God's love. Our time to wait is over. Our days of preparation are complete. Christ is born, and God is with us. We light this candle because Christ needs to be the center of our world and the focus of our lives. Isaiah wrote, For unto us a child is given, unto us a Savior is born, and the order of the world shall be upon his shoulders. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have made this night holy by the gifts of your Son, born of the Spirit and of Mary. Let his light shine into our hearts. Help us to hear your promise to embrace in our hearts and to carry it into our lives. Amen. Friends, this has been our practice throughout this time of prolonged pandemic. Offerings will be received as a retiring offering. 
This is also the case for today's Christmas offerings. Plates may be found at the rear of the Meeting House Sanctuary as you recess. And our ushers will be happy to assist if you have any questions. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, by your great love, Jesus became incarnate and was born of the Virgin Mary by the Holy Spirit, so that your people may be forgiven and saved. We cannot repay such an amazing gift. But we bring you the humble offerings of our time, our treasure, and our talent, and pray that they may be used to show others the glory of the coming kingdom through Jesus Christ. Amen.
May the Lord God open our hearts and minds as we now witness the word in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 8 through 14. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. This is the gospel message of our Savior. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Grabbing that warm beverage, you head outside, walking carefully across the ice to your, your frozen vehicle. Even after having warmed the car up, you gently place your drink down, wobbly, still having to scrape the windows clean. Isn't it funny how much you can sweat in the cold? Pulling the door from its icy seal, you throw yourself onto the seat, looking down at all the snow and sludge you just tracked in because you forgot to kick your boots. Saying a quick prayer of thanksgiving for that just under the quarter of tank gas you have left. You slowly back out of the driveway. Neighbors hear the clanking sound of your broken muffler catching a quick glimpse as you drive by before returning to their eggnog and candy canes and, and that out-of-sync online family caroling before the coast-to-coast -coast Christmas Eve Zoom dinner. Who knows, maybe we'll forget the reason we started doing these things years from now. Cruising along, you seem less and less concerned about the black ice below you as you burn through what little you have in the tank. Kind of like Santa's sleigh, but without Rudolph and only just a couple of reindeer helping out. The truck stop lights shine into the darkness above as you pick up speed just on the ramp. That darkness seems to melt down faster and faster. You know the bank closes any minute. You know how much is at stake. You know you have to cash that check now. You need to get there. How is it that something so close can often feel like a million miles away? Looking out your driver's side mirror, the blinding halogen lights of new cars make it harder to gauge how and when you get over. One vehicle is so slow, they appear to plan to drive you off the road, meeting at the exact same time when your tires rub against each other. The second one is bent on going so fast that there isn't space for anyone else. They might even hit the first car just next to you. So you think to yourself, what is, what is with this situation? I have almost no gas. The bank closes kind of right now. It's Christmas Eve, and, and what are all these people doing around me? You only have a few choices, really. You can stay at the same pace and get run off the road. You can slam on the brakes and get hit by the speeding car that's coming up next, and maybe even get rear-ended by the car behind you. Or... You can quick put the pedal to the metal and try frantically to outrun them all. So what's best? How do you navigate this safely, respectively? 
and all while still getting there on time. How do you not miss it? How do you merge? Well, friends, as you well know, merging is not only about driving a car, a truck, or a van. It isn't just about transitioning to or from a home to retirement or to a birth or, or to a death. And it isn't only about knowing when to bail and jump off our scooter before our little brother takes us out with his big wheels, which can happen. Sure, these may be real-life examples of what merging looks like in our everyday experience, but isn't there also something more? Isn't there something just a bit deeper, hovering behind the way we merge throughout our lives? In Luke 2, we witness the amazing story of Jesus' birth. Yet in the specific passage we just heard, the focus is on how the shepherds respond to the good news delivered by the angels. These shepherds go about their work until they're suddenly surprised and scared by the presence of an angel. All throughout the Bible, we see how angels are messengers of God, sent to do God's work, or in this case, to share the good news of God's work. The shepherds, these people of God's earth, well, they're caught off guard. But the angel, God's creature of heaven, explains to the shepherds that they do not need to be afraid. In essence, heaven reassures earth that all will be well, that it's okay. Why? Because the Savior has been born, the Messiah, the Christ. Now, while we learn of their action following a little later in this chapter, well, right here, we don't have a picture, really, of what those shepherds looked like, what they felt like in that precise moment when they were reassured by the angel. We do know, however, what happened next, and just the story right after that. The angel is suddenly joined by a multitude of the heavenly host who praise God. While we like to picture angels in our own mind, it's curious to consider how this can render itself a little differently as the heavenly host, or also as the heavenly army depending on which translation you read. Now, technically speaking, the actual Greek, because remember the New Testament was written in Greek, it actually means army. But doesn't that kind of change what it, what it feels like to us? The shepherds are met with this army of angels. So picture yourself among the shepherds at that instant, when an army of angels appear before you from heaven, not out of the blue or out of the light, but out of the dark. Remember that the shepherds had been tending their flocks by night. Angels appear in the dark sky, and of all things, they praise God. They also sing, and the words they sang were, glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among people with whom he is pleased. So there you stand, having worked, tended to your flock on earth, and then you are met with the presence of heaven as an angel engages you, and as angels appear before you singing of God and of people, singing of heaven and earth. Both the creation of God, heaven and earth have so often felt far away for us. But scripture shows how things aren't simply about what we feel. They're about God's desire. And as the Bible shows us time and time again, God wants to be with his people. And that God will stop at nothing to achieve being with his people. And so Jesus came to us. Jesus came to earth, to all of us. Yet in that coming, all things were changed. 
all was being remade, renewed. Through Jesus Christ, both heaven and earth are being brought together. They merge. And yet the highest heaven and the lowest earth have never been so far as we might have believed. Remember how we were actually with God when he walked with us and spoke to us in the garden. While God called us to stay the course on his path, we have often fallen away from that path. Whether we have seemingly gotten ahead in our own minds or simply do not allow room for others, well, God continues to call us back and shows us where to merge through Jesus. So what is best? Indeed, how do we, you and I, navigate this life together safely, compassionately, and with great love, all while still getting there on time? How do you not miss it? How do you merge? Sisters and brothers, perhaps we have been asking ourselves the wrong question. It's not we who make the decisive action to merge. Rather, it's God who makes that move towards us with great love, as only God can do. We'll get there in time. For in Christ Jesus, as heaven and earth renew, we are merged as one. May it be so. Amen. Please join us in singing the carols in your bulletin as we witness the story of Jesus' birth and the light before Christmas. We remember and celebrate the story of God's light long promised, now with us. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed, and all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, with Mary, his espoused wife being great with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger. And there were in that same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, 
and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. When Jesus was born in the days of Herod, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and have come to worship him. They were told, In Bethlehem of Judea, where it is written by the prophet. When they heard the king, they went their way, and lo, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced, and going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Hymns of joy, the 
thus the time of God's promise had come. The people walking in darkness shall see a great light. For a child is born to us, a son is given. The government shall rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Emmanuel, Wonderful Counselor, the Prince of Peace.
Sisters and brothers, the Lord lives. Blessed be our rock, and exalted be the God of our salvation. Lead us into your truth and teach us, Lord, for you are the God of our salvation. For in Christ Jesus, the grace of God has appeared to all, bringing salvation. And now, friends, may the God of all love bless you and keep you. May God make his face shine upon you and grant you peace, both now and forevermore. And friends, for the young and young at heart, we have a special Christmas ornament. So please be sure to get one as you leave. Merry Christmas. Please extinguish your candles and rise and join us in singing our Send and Carol, Joy to the World. 